So welcome back to uh, one of our new tutorials. In this case, we having Bang Q with us, Art Suman Sang. Great to see you again. Glad to be here. Thanks for coming. Um, today, we want to show you a little bit about how you would calibrate a SW321C. But the same tutorial actually works also with the SW272U and also some of the other models that yes. are coming ready. Now, in this case, what we have done to get this whole thing started is that we have connected the USB-A to USB-B cable uh, that's actually Actually, in the box of the monitor. Right. So, by the way, that's pretty cool. So, this unboxing experience, I have to say, it's really nice. Yes. So, it's kind of you have all the cables, everything is there. You just get started. Yep. Ready to go on day one. Very cool. So, um, what we do is loading the workflow first. So, we go to open workflow template, and the first thing what we do is actually we go to the display specific workflows because that's where we have all of our partners like BenQ, and there we have the option to either load the HDR monitor calibration workflow or the uh, SDR workflow, and that's what we do right now. So um, we open this workflow, and you see then it's not just nicely branded and shows that's the Banky workflow, but it's a wizard that's guiding you step by step through this process. Right. So even if you've never done this before, there are a lot of kind of tips and tricks that actually help you to get where you want to go. Yeah. And since not every artist probably is a calibrator. Yeah, that's true. All right. So um, the first thing is we click on Start Calibration, and that gets us to our Hardware Connect page. Now, the Hardware Connect page is that you connect to the meter, and you connect to your pattern source, because we need reference test patterns. And of course, we need to connect to the monitor. And so step by step, we're going to do this. So in the first case, we click on Find Meter. And there you already see that it's not just our C6 that's supported, but basically every meter on the, in the world can be somehow used with CalMem. Right. right. So if someone already owns an i1 Pro or a Klein or a Yeti or whatever, so you can use that already. Yeah. Right. right. So we now search. And uh, in this case, it's now looking for what's attached to uh, CalMem. Now it starts blinking the LED, and the C6 says, oh, here it is and it switches to green light that tells us, oh yeah, it's already properly connected. And what we also need to do is we tell CalMan what kind of display technology we're actually using. Mm -hmm. So it's called our EDR, or the display profiles, mm -hmm. which are all managed through CalMan software. Now in this case, we look for the BenQ monitors, which are basically uh, PFS phosphors. Okay. Uh, and so that's the one we're using in this combination for this monitor. And then in the second go, we just actually click Find Monitor. And in this case, we just search for BenQ. And there we already see there is the PV270, there's the SW27, but there could be the 272 then right. in the future, the new one. And then SW321C, which is this one. And it says use B type A to use B type B. So it gives you already that information that you should use the cable from yes. the box. And we click Connect. Now, this takes a moment that could take a little bit. So what we're going to do is we fast forward this for you guys so you don't have to sit there and actually watch while it's connecting to the monitor. So after we connect it to the monitor, you can see already at the uh, display tab here uh, in the uh, uh, top right corner, it says calibration one. If I click this, you see there are different actually calibration modes. Um, that's for the, let's say, advanced user. You could actually go in th that menu and do some things. We just stick easily to our uh, wizard because not everybody probably knows how to do this. So we will get to this point, which mode we want to calibrate. We get to right. this in a minute. And then in the end, I have to choose my pattern source. You see, so I can open a pattern window. Now, that would be, for example, Kalman's own pattern window. Um, so if you want to use your HDMI output on your laptop, where also Kalman is residing on. But this is something we normally do not recommend. Okay. Because you never know really what's stepping on your video when right. you have HDMI output. Um, if you have a real video card, like a Blackmagic Decklink, AGI Kona, Clean Bluefish, output. yes, yeah. right. So you know what your video is doing. Doing, then that's something else. Okay. But um, if you have any kind of whatever and you have 1,000 settings, it's better probably to use an external pattern source right. just to make sure you have a reference signal. And that's exactly what we do. So now we say connect to the external generator. And in this case, we have our Video Forge Pro generator. That's just an HDMI generator that also supports HDR and up to 4K, no, no, 8K resolution, even the new one. 
and um, connect to this via USB. And it's very important that you uh, actually take care of a couple of sec uh, uh, settings. So the first one is you want to put your window size, the pattern size on full field, 100% mm -hmm. windows, because that's the, the ideal thing for this monitor. Um, you want to put the pattern delay on one second, uh, which is basically uh, what our recommendation is from the experience we have with this model with those monitors and it's also important to put your color format on RGB full uh, full range 8-bit. Okay. So these are the three settings you actually should have in mind every time you're calibrating this monitor and as soon as you have that set then you actually can start and continue with uh, your calibration targets. Now the beauty is that the uh, BenQ monitors have actually three different calibration modes. Yes. So it's Cal1, Cal2, Cal3. Yeah. And we can do whatever we want, basically based on whatever video standards are out there. Or different workflow that you're doing for right. the different output standard. Exactly, Deliverable. Right. Exactly, the key, yeah, yeah, the keyword, deliverables, yeah. right? Yeah. So depending for what you want to create the content and what the deliverable it's going to be, you also want to work in that color space. Now, in this case, for example, if you would want to use that for video editing or video color correction and things like this, you probably want to create a calibration for BT709, which is the HD standard. So that's what you see. It's already a default setting here because that's the typical calibration. And we have put the white point to D65. The color space or gamma is 709. And then the EOTF. Now, in this case, the gamma correction, we would put to power which is the power function, and instead of a gamma of 2.2, which is sRGB, right. we use gamma 2.4, because that is typical for uh, video, and um, our AutoCal de Delta E formula, DE2000, is what you normally know, but there's one that's even more precise on how we perceive color these days, as we know, and that is ITP. So we keep it at ITP and say next. So what you see now is the pre-calibration capture. So that is the first kind of layout where we measure what the state of the display is before the calibration. Right. So we can compare this in, uh, later on with the report. Um, we can also have that for validation to see how the calibration worked out. Right. Um, and in this case, and that's very important information, we're not measuring the, that's actually the factory calibration. Right, I was gonna bring that up. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So it's just the calibration one mode, which we want to calibrate, and we're measuring this whatever that is. So it's not the Kelman verified whatever you had with Adobe mm -hmm. RGB or something that's already very well pre-calibrated in the factory. Yeah. Right? But in this case, we want to see what it's doing. So we go to read series. And now Kelman is loading um, or controlling the generator, telling the generator what patter patterns or patches should be loaded. Mm -hmm. And that is basically the, um, the um, uh, state that we now start to do the measurements, right? So you see now that was grayscale, so it was just checking the grayscale, and then in the in the second run, it's going to check uh, RGB, CM, uh, Zion, Magenta, and Yellow, and so we see now that what you measure is basically the um, the panel gamut, the overall native panel gamut. Yeah. Yeah. And since it's kind of what is it, 99% of Adobe RGB? Yeah, 99% Adobe RGB. This one has 95% P3. And I also want to add in as well as that when you're doing these pre-calibration in either calibration one, two, or three, sometimes you're going to get a delta E that's extremely high. That's, again, not the state of the panel. It's just that calibration slot. And if this is the first time you're really running a hardware calibration, then that is pretty much just empty without any controls, without any LUT being on there right now. So it's not necessarily indicative of like the quality panel. It's just the state that is currently in. Exactly, very well put, right, exactly. Just what it is, and it is what it is, as we sometimes say. Exactly. And then we have to make it what we want it to be, right? Yeah. Exactly. So now that's our pre-cal pre capture, and in the next stage, we actually move on, and now we can actually pick whatever mode we want to calibrate. Mm -hmm. So as you were explaining, the Cal1, for example, or Cal2, or Cal3 mode. So there are two different options you have. So you can either calibrate a 1D LUT with a 3D LUT, so the 1D LUT does grayscale, the 3D LUT is the color cube, yes. or you calibrate a 1D LUT with a 3x3 matrix. A 3x3 matrix is also a color correction, but it's actually a much, it's a fixed grid, and the difference is that um, from our experience with this monitor, a 3D LUT actually works best, and right. it's the one you want to do, and that's actually what we do now in this case. So. Um, I'll pick my uh, calibration one mode, and before I can start calibration, I have to reset the mode, 
and that can take about 15 minutes. So again, we're just going to fast forward so you don't have to be with us all the time, and we continue as soon as the mode is reset. All right, so now the, the mode we want to calibrate is reset, mm -hmm. so we actually can start. So we put the calibration 1, 2, 3D LUT, and we say next. So the first thing that we do is we actually define what kind of peak luminance we want to have. So, and normally for BT709, the recommendation is 100 nits. Yes. And uh, we can measure now, we, if we just take a reading, we see now the monitor is 311 nits. So we could either use the plus and minus controls here to reduce the luminance, but that could be a little bit tedious, so we just can enter a number here like reducing it by 50%, you see how it's getting dimmer. And we take another reading, now we have 180 nits and uh, probably want to give it a little bit less here, like 30. Let's see where we are with this. It's 135, almost there. That's good. And then let's try 25. Yeah, so we're about 120 nits, mm -hmm. and we're normally losing about 10, 15% of luminance when we are in the calibration process, so it makes sense to have about 115, 110 nits, and that will be good enough for then starting the calibration. So we go a little bit lower, so we just kind of, yeah, 112, that's great. So we say next. And now we're getting to our auto calibration page. Now that's the interesting one where we start to click our auto cal button here. Mm -hmm. And it opens a window where we can define what kind of LUT, 1D LUT we want to okay. uh, calibrate. So in this case, normally the recommendation is 33 points that we're just going to uh, uh, profile with this monitor. And so we set it to 33 full levels. And since we used ITP mm -hmm. instead of Delta E2000, we put the Delta to 1, um, which uh, makes more sense for ITP instead of 0.5, and then we hit OK. Now that's also going to take about 10 minutes, so we're going to fast forward, and then we're going to be back when we have the 1D LUT loaded. So now we have the 1D LUT built. Now we actually have to define what kind of 3D LUT we want to build. Okay. Now there are different options, right? So we have a lightning LUT, which is 101 readings. That normally does most of the jobs. If you want to have more accuracy, you see there are fixed grids like 9 points, 13, 17, 21. So that's between 729 readings mm -hmm. for the 9 point. It's like 9 by 9 by 9 uh, for a cube. Um, or 17 points, that's about 5,000. And 21 is then about 10,000 readings. So normally you would do this maybe run overnight or something, and then on the next day you return and then you finish right. the job. But in this case, now for today, we're just going to do a lightning LUT and uh, yeah, basically uh, make sure that uh, we have all set correctly. Full range here again is important. And then we say, okay, and now it's starting to initialize and then load those 101 patches and profiling it. So now we're done. So it says Aurora Color Engine has calibration completed successfully, and we see the 101 readings. It took about 14 minutes, and we say OK. And so in the next step, all we need to do is we again validate the uh, luminance. And now we see we have about 112. We didn't lose much light. No, not so at all. it's still kind of 100 nits. And uh, then finally, we go to the post calibration page. Now this is the validation. Mm -hmm. So that means we're measuring, now the LUT is pushed on the monitor. So we're basically reading the monitor, including the LUT. And so see how the calibration result actually turns out. And then we can create the report. Right. And when we're done, then we can actually start calibrating the second or third uh, calibration mode. Yeah. So let's start and uh, let's see where this goes. So we're going to actually go to read series, and we're going to see that now we're just checking the uh, color gamut and the grayscale, and we basically measure what the LUT looks like and mm -hmm. if the LUT is working the way it's supposed to work. Right. And then when this is all done, we can create the report and um, are done for today. So now we have our post calp capture, and uh, so in the next step, we can actually pick, do we want to have additional validation? So we, for example, could check the uh, color checker or the color, color saturation sweeps. Mm -hmm. So different kind of different layouts and, and uh, validation tools that we can use to validate our LUT or our metrics. Mm -hmm. um, in our case, we just finished the calibration by saving it and actually creating the report. So we just give it a name like, uh, 
uh, SW321C, and we have the calibration date already, and we probably name it BT709, so we know that was the calibration right. for 709. And we save those edits, and then we create the PDF and the uh, report. Now, it makes sense maybe to hang up the report somewhere if you are using that on the job. You can show your customers how well your display is calibrated, right. for example. And now in the report you see that was the pre-calibration state of that calibration mode. Mm -hmm. Again, it's not the pre factory calibration, right. just the calibration mode before it was calibrated. What you can see is this report is now um, kind of uh, the post-calibration is um, showing you the very, very low deltas and um, basically how well the LUT performs right. versus the um, original pre-calibration reading that was just the calibration mode. It has nothing to do with the factory calibration and the different modes that are coming out of the factory. So it's really kind of what the mode was before we created the LUT. Yes. Right. So that's all for now, folks. Um, I hope it's great. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments section. Thanks, Art, for coming over. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.